Good morning, Metalheads Unit. Welcome to a new episode of the Metal Meltdown. And today we're looking at the latest studio album from Anvil entitled Legal at Last. You know, it's really hard not to admire and respect a band like Anvil who have been pushing their brand of classic rock and heavy metal for just about 40 years now. They've never really seen any widespread recognition aside from a brief period in the late 2000s following the infamous Story of Anvil documentary, but they have remained a pivotal force of the Canadian underground metal scene, an icon to a certain extent, and there are big name metal bands all over the world that would cite Anvil as an influence and an inspiration. And honestly, how could you not, even if you don't really care for their music, the fact that they've been kicking for 40 years. The fact that they've been kicking for 40 years, not for money, not for fame, not for recognition, not that they'd receive any at this point especially, but simply because they love rock and roll. Simply because they love hot riffs and cold beer and a good party. Like, that's honestly awesome. And for these reasons alone, I hope that Anvil is remembered by future generations of metal for years and years to come. But unfortunately, we're not here to talk about the legacy of Anvil, and also unfortunately, I'm sure as many of you already know, sheer determination, humility, and a love for classic rock and metal vibes does not immediately equate to a fantastic record. To put it very simply, as much as I admire and respect Anvil, I'd be lying if I said they were anything more than, musically speaking, a one-trick pony. And while that one trick may have worked perfectly fine in the early 80s, given the raw and unrefined nature of early records like Metal on Metal, landing themselves perfectly to the emerging thrash metal genres, that one trick doesn't work so great in 2020. And at this point, I find myself being kind of tired and bored of the band's overly repetitive nature and sound. They occupy the same space as bands like Overkill and Annihilator, making the same album pretty much over and over again, appealing to the same uh, audiences over and over again, refusing to acknowledge anything new within the metal spectrum, and quite proudly putting their foot down and saying, no, this is my metal, if you don't like it, you can go home. And as such, an album like Legal at Last, despite its best intentions, ultimately fails to captivate me pretty much immediately. I mean, I love you, Anvil, I really do, but it's just ultimately really hard for me to get excited about the 18th studio album from a band that refuses to change, that insists on making the same type of album over and over and over again. It immediately begs the question, why should I bother checking out the new album, which is just a half-baked version of the old album? Especially when I already have the old album, and it's great. Why? I mean, everything is just so predictable to the point where you can even point to certain songs and say, this is what this is supposed to sound like. I had a moment like that listening to the track Nabbed in Nebraska, where I out loud went, this kind of feels like it's supposed to be the modern metal on metal. It moves and flows the same way, it's got a very similar riff, the only thing that really separates this, objectively speaking, is the sound mix and, frankly, the lyrics. The latter I would not be particularly proud of, because even by the standards of Anvil, the lyrics on this album are super campy and juvenile. It's a lot of lyrics about rock and roll and, and never giving up, and a lot of weed. A lot of talk about weed. A lot of celebration of weed. I mean, for God's sakes, the title track itself, Legal at Last, is literally about Canada legalizing pot, and Anvil just kind of goes, yeah, legal at last, we can smoke as much pot as we want. I guess to be entirely fair, legal at last at the very least provides a, a bit of dumb fun, particularly with those gang vocals, and while we're on that note, I, I should say that there were some tracks that did legitimately entertain me, even if just for brief moments. You know, tracks like I'm Alive, Bottom Line, Gasoline, they're, they're pretty meat and potatoes, all things considered, but... I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with meat and potatoes every now and then. You know, if you're looking for that classic Anvil sound, they get the job done. They've got some upbeat tempos, they got some catchy riffs. There's a little bit of Anvil's signature attitude still intact after all these years. But even within this very, very strict template, there are things that just don't work. Objectively, inarguably, don't work. Take, for instance, Lip's vocals. His voice is perfectly well suited for your standard thrash metal shout or growl, but literally any time he attempts to stray outside of that realm and go into some more traditional hard rock 
singing, he falls flat on his ass. He simply just does not have the range and physical capability to carry a traditional melody. Particularly on the almost irritating closing track, Said and Done, which itself also suffers from being kind of lethargic and lumbering around, lacking the pace and energy usually demanded of a, an album closer. It really hurts me to talk about Anvil this way because they really are the underdogs of metal. They've been kicking around forever. They try their hardest. They, they really truly do. That is always evident. But it just never really quite works out. Especially not nowadays where they have settled into this pure, bland, creative rut where they do make the same tired, dated, boomer-friendly rock record over and over and over again. Sure, there's still some dumb fun to be found on this record, particularly if you're a longtime diehard Anvil fan, but not enough to where I could rank this as anything higher than like a 2 out of 5. You know, the songs are repetitive, predictable, the lyrics are corny, childish, at times even bordering on cringeworthy, and the album panders so heavily to Anvil loyalists and older audiences that I find it hard to believe that anyone outside of those realms would find anything to enjoy here aside from laughing at some of the genuine stupidity found within the campy lyrics and aesthetic. Which for the record, many have already done. Metal outlets such as Metal Injection and Exclaim, for instance, have taken a good look at that ridiculous album cover and said, damn that's ridiculous, and have since given this album not a single thought. If you love chain restaurants and Bud Light and you think that all modern music is manufactured garbage and you sit around wondering what happened to the good old days of rock and roll, then you will probably genuinely really enjoy this record. And more power to you because you're clearly the audience that Anvil is meant for at this point. But I will happily stick with Metal on Metal. And if you're brand new to the band, I would just skip this altogether and jump straight to this. Two out of five. I do weirdly recommend it just for the sake of giving Anvil some recognition for their work, for their legacy, but that's really about it. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be, so what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? Thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown immediately, and you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.